The haters are wrong and the Apple Vision Pro is going to be a massive success. There, I said it in uncertain terms. It's on the internet, which means it can't be deleted. Yeah, so I realized that I haven't actually made a video talking about the Apple Vision Pro. And it's ironic because I think that this is an iPhone moment, legitimately, like this is the new iPhone. And I haven't talked about it because I got too bogged down reviewing all the Macs that came out at WWDC. But don't let my poor content planning fool you. I am 100% on board with the Apple Vision Pro. Aside from a few, let's call them quirks, I legitimately believe that what we are witnessing right now is a reinvention of technology, much the same way that Apple reinvented the phone in 2007. But much like the launch of the original iPhone, there are a lot of detractors and naysayers who think that Apple got it wrong. And while I understand and appreciate some of those arguments, I still think they're all wrong. So today I'd like to present my case by going all the way back to 2007. But first, by going to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Eralo, the world's first eSIM store that solves the pain of high roaming bills with eSIMs for over 200 countries and regions. I've been traveling a lot this year and it has been a pain dealing with mobile data plans. That's where Eralo can help. With Eralo, you can pick out eSIM plans, choose between local, regional, and global eSIMs, install and connect, and even receive calls and SMS on your original phone number, all in one easy to use app. Just open the app, pick a country, and you'll see options for data amounts, validity, duration, and prices, starting as low as just four and a half dollars. Comparative roaming data plans can cost more than $10 per day, but I found this 20 gigabyte plan good for 30 days at just $33 on Eralo. It makes mobile data plans fast, easy, and simple, and you can have multiple eSIMs on your phone at any given moment. To learn more about Eralo and get started today, check out the link in the description below. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. So, the original iPhone. I don't think there has been a keynote address more iconic and impactful than that that Steve Jobs delivered on January 9th, 2007. I mean, who can forget such iconic lines as, An iPod. <laughs> a phone. <laughs> Are you getting it? And, and to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. And of course, no. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? I mean, come on, those are all classics. And I think we all look at the launch of the original iPhone with rose tinted spectacles on because in many ways, it looks obvious now, right? We see the original iPhone, iPhone OS 1.0, and we think, oh, look at that. That's where it all began. This is such an iconic device. These things go for hundreds of dollars on eBay just because people want to appreciate where the iPhone began. But when this was brand new, the rose tinted spectacles, they didn't exist yet. And there were just as many criticisms of this thing as there are today. Let's go through a few. $500 fully subsidized with a plan. I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world. And it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard. You can get uh, a Motorola Q phone now for $99. It's a very capable machine. It'll do music, it'll do uh, internet, it'll do email, it'll do instant messaging. So I, I kind of look at that and I say, well, I like our strategy. I like it a lot. I mean, that's the big one, right? Steve Ballmer famously trashed the iPhone and famously later said that he was very much incorrect for that, but he wasn't the only one. There was a small army of bloggers and journalists throwing doubt on Apple's new iPhone. There were full on listicles of reasons why people thought the iPhone would fail. Some of these are pretty minor. Text entry won't work well. It's ugly, slow internet access due to a lack of 3G support. All of those are fair. But then there's some curveballs. Touch screens lose their sensitivity. That clearly wasn't an issue. A lack of IM. Who even uses IM anymore? That's nothing. This article talks about how comparisons to the iPod are short-sighted because the MP3 player business was segmented and unfocused with a lot of people making a lot of cheap junk. So Apple made a decent product, links it with a great promotional campaign, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself a winning product, no sweat. But the mobile phone you see is not an emerging business. It's all done and dusted. It's gone so far, that there are only two major players dominating the mobile phone business, Nokia and Motorola. 
Boy, that reads funny 16 years later, doesn't it? I could go on and on, of course, but there are a lot of similarities to the way that people talk about the headset, its limitations. It's kind of creepy OLED screen that shows your eyes on the front, the battery pack that's tethered by a cord, and of course, the price, the, the absolutely bananas $3,500 price tag. But almost all of these things have direct parallels to the iPhone, and we already know how that worked out. First of all, there's the fact that it uses your eyes and fingers as control devices. That is almost word for word Steve's original rejection of the stylus back in 2007 and insisting that a touchscreen and using your fingers as input devices was the way to go. We're gonna use the best pointing device in the world. We're gonna use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're gonna use our fingers. And on the subject of price, I know a lot of people think it's just too expensive to catch on, but people thought that about the iPhone as well. Here's T-Mobile's website from almost exactly one year before the iPhone came out. You'll notice our old friend the Motorola Razr is just $50, and if we click view all phones, almost all of these are free. Now remember, in the mid-2000s, all of these phones were subsidized, so it wasn't actually a $0 phone, it was just that you were paying for it over the course of your two-year contract. That's what the original iPhone was sold as as well. It was $500 for this four gigabyte model, and that was paid off over two years. But with that in mind, look at all of these free phones. In fact, if we go to page four, the most expensive page, even still with these high-end BlackBerry phones, we're at $200, 350 bucks was the most expensive phone that you could buy in total from T-Mobile in 2006. And then Steve Jobs comes along and says, hey, 499 for four gigabytes and 599 for eight. That's, that's how they launched it. But this is where we get to the most important part of this comparison, because the original iPhone wasn't that good. What the heck am I talking about? Isn't that kind of antithetical to what I'm saying? Well, not really. The original iPhone was kind of a limited, very basic phone. And as it shipped here on iPhone OS 1.0, it, it really didn't do very much. So let me take you on a quick tour of iPhone OS 1.0. This is where it all began. And I will tell you this tour will be quick because that's all there is. We get 16 apps. There's no wallpaper, there's no swiping. You can't hold to rearrange the apps. Steve Jobs imagined third-party expansion would be done through widgets in Safari. So that's all there was at first. Obviously some of the big apps here was having a phone with contacts, a keypad, and a visual voicemail here, which obviously does not work now. Those were pretty big at the time. Of course, there's the classic text messaging interface that we all know and love. That was a pretty big one and having an iPod interface with a touch screen was also new. Then aside from those main features, you've got a weather stock, a YouTube client, a very simple calendar, a, a clock app that's honestly not that different from now with alarm stopwatches and timers and stuff like that. Oh snap, that timer's been going for a really long time. And of course, who could forget the beautifully skeuomorphic and extremely basic notes app. It's basically just text edit, that's about it. So there you have it. That is iPhone OS 1.0. That's where it all began. Yeah, it was pretty limited, but that's kind of the point. This was Apple's first attempt at making a phone. They obviously weren't going to have it completely sorted out, but just four iterations later, we have the iPhone 4. And this is when I think the iPhone went from early adopter phase to mainstream phase. This is when things started to really build momentum. And then of course you have the iPhone 5, this is where I bought in, and this I still maintain is one of the best phones of all time. I mean, it's absolutely stunning, it was refined, beautiful, functional, the App Store was booming, the iTunes Store was booming, there were entire businesses that made their living developing apps for the phone, and the original one didn't even have an app store. So these iPhones are five years and a world apart, but despite that, they are fundamentally extremely similar, right? When you compare these to flip phones or sliding phones or Blackberries or candy bar phones or any of the numerous attempts at making the next big thing for consumer mobile phones, this is obviously the answer, right? This is what we all have now. It's a rectangle in your pocket with a screen and things that you touch with your finger. That 
fundamentally is what made the iPhone work. It wasn't the price tag or the storage or the individual features. And that I think is what Apple is doing again now. The Vision Pro is more a rejection of the way that headsets have been done up until now than it is the be all end all, this is it, that's what you're getting for the future. Do I think that millions of people are gonna be walking around wearing the Apple Vision Pro as it is now? Of course not. But the fundamental technologies that it's using will be around for a long time. Using your eyes and your fingers for control. Photo real, mixed reality world that isn't virtual and doesn't trap you out from others. And of course, that beautiful high resolution display technology that is underpinning this whole thing that powers all of those features. These are the core elements of the Vision Pro and those are the things that will make it great. The price tag, the battery life, the kind of goofy look, the OLED display on the front, those are the early quirks and features that all Apple products have when they first come out. And yeah, I'm sure that a lot of those aren't gonna make it and that this first headset is going to be very much for early adopters who are willing to take that gamble. After all, there weren't a lot of people that continued to use the iPhone 2G even two or three years after it came out. So all I'm saying is to hold your horses. Don't get distracted by the $3,500 price tag, the black mirror eyes on the front, or the battery pack that sits in your pocket and only gives you two hours of battery life. Apple isn't gonna just launch the iPhone 5 straight away. That's why it's the 5, there were four others. So mark my words, wait and see. Vision Pro is going places. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me that the iPhone 5 is the best looking phone of all time, and I'll see you in the next one.